used the term rock quite a bit already because it's a term that is in famili that's familiar in everyday language. But formally defined, a rock is an aggregate of mineral grains or crystals, in other words, lots of mineral grains or crystals that are somehow stuck together, or a mass of glass. Now, natural glass is relatively rare on the Earth. It does occur, and we'll show you pieces of it, but in general, it's relatively rare. So most rocks can be considered to be aggregates of mineral grains or mineral crystals. We distinguish between two overall categories of rocks based on the way in which the grains are stuck together. Rocks in which the grains are separate pieces that are cemented together are called clastic rocks, and those grains are referred to as clasts. Rocks in which the grains intergrow together so they effectively lock together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle are called crystalline rocks. So to a first approximation, we can divide rocks into clastic rocks or crystalline rocks. Here's an example of a clastic rock formed by volcanic processes. We can call it a volcanoclastic rock. Each of these pieces here is a fragment that's been shot out of a volcano, and they've accumulated in layers, and later cements formed by, water, formed by precipitation of other minerals from water that's passing through the spaces between the grains has held those grains together so that it's now a coherent mass. Here's an example of a crystalline rock. This happens to be a kind of rock called a granite in which all the grains, there are several different kinds of grains in here, um, different minerals represented by different colors, they're all intergrown like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Now when molten rock solidifies, it does not form a single mineral crystal. Rather, it forms lots of mineral crystals. So it's an aggregate of many grains or crystals. If we look, for example, at this rock shown by the photograph on, this, on the left and expand it using a microscope so we can see down to the size of individual grains, we can see lots of different mineral grains. And we can outline one of these grains, which represents, in this case, a single crystal of quartz. Geologists recognize, in fact, thousands of different kinds of minerals. But fortunately, we don't have to remember all of these different kinds of minerals. There are some that are called common minerals. And for the sake of our discussion, we can recognize eh, maybe about eight minerals. In igneous rocks, it's typical to find mineral quartz, the mineral orthoclase, the mineral plagioclase, the mineral muscovite, mineral biotite, amphibole, pyroxene, and olivine. These are some of the more common minerals that occur within igneous rocks. Two of them, orthoclase and plagioclase, are kinds of minerals called feldspars. Another two, biotite and muscovite, are a kind of mineral or a class of mineral called micas. We'll get back to discussing what distinguishes these different classes later. But for the sake of our discussion, let's familiarize ourselves with these basic names of some very common minerals. Let's get back to the issue of how, rocks, how molten rock solidifies to form a solid rock. Well, it doesn't all happen at once. It takes time. And as was discovered by geologists over 100, about 100 years ago or so, not all of the minerals that make up the rock form at the same time. Simplistically, there's a sequence in which the different minerals form. And this was first recognized by a geologist by the name of Norman Bowen, and it's now called Bowen's Reaction Series. Specifically, if you start crystallizing a mafic melt, the first mineral to form will be olivine. The second mineral will be pyroxene, then amphibole, and then biotite, and then finally quartz and muscovite and potassium feldspar. At the same time as those minerals are forming, plagioclase is also forming. The composition of it changes. It starts by being a calcium-rich plagioclase and later becomes a sodium-rich plagioclase. It's a lot of detail, but the main point that I'm making is simply that when rock forms, it's not like all of the minerals that you see in the rock form at once, but different minerals form at different times in sequence. And actually, during the whole process, there are some very complicated chemical reactions taking place.